Hey folks, it's Steve Wilmus and Matt Keita. How are you guys doing? Hey, <laughs> I hope you're doing well because we're doing great. We're we're actually in Carmel. Mm -hmm. uh, we're having a little cigar. We did a little fishing off the pier today, mm -hmm. and we're getting ready to do some work. But we're talking about today this new workplace violence standard that is going to be coming into play, and that's uh, based off of Senate Bill Five Five three here in California mm -hmm. <laughs> and just kind of talking about all the things that have to be done around it yeah. and what's coming in and I think there's a lot of talk about people being concerned about all the provisions of this law yeah 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 exactly and it honestly it's kind of like it's kind of like um, Keep going. It's recording. Okay. okay, good. It's still recording. <laughs> it's kind of like they focus this law specifically on creating the injury owners prevention plan entirely focused within the workplace violence plan. Yeah. So it, it, it's like we're going and they, they have repetitive language. And uh, it's basically. Well, start like, at the top, I think. Right. There's, there's a lot of provisions to it. Yes. But I think the biggest key here is that those provisions, while they seem numerous and complex mm -hmm. and they seem to be even onerous, they're really not that bad. No. And no, I, I think two things that come to mind uh, for myself, having worked for a JPA in the past, mm and having a 175 school district clients, we got a lot, you know, I did a lot of, uh, we, we talked about stakeouts today. Right. We talked about sexual harassment issues. We talked about um, bullying. There, there's just a lot of things that came about which put into kind of the, the school district's purview is, hey, we got a potential threat that may spill over on our campuses, right. and we really would like this person to have a restraining order, or can the, the court's not really giving them a restraining order. Right. So is there some way that we can help them get a restraining order? Mm -hmm. And in those cases, we could do a TRO, which is a temporary restraining order, right. a lot of times, and we would pr help pr uh, present evidence to help with that. And SB 553 really, it puts in four different sections of the code mm -hmm. um, provisions, two of which are the ability to get temporary restraining orders. Yes, yes. And, and you, uh, we were driving up here today, so I told Matt, <laughs> Read out loud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, here is, I, I should I, I, I should I, <laughs> record everybody it. Thinks you, 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 you probably are when you go out driving, you're listening to podcasts or music. No, we just read, we just read the OSHA code out loud. I mean, no, the the Senate bill. <laughs> the Senate bill, which will. will yeah, you read the OSHA code too, yeah, but <laughs> I read the OSHA code too. <laughs> Matt's got a very fun job. <laughs> I had already read it, but it it's always good to have the audio version of it. <laughs> yeah. So thank you, Matt. <laughs> you know, I've got that that that. I think the word is mellifluff. Mellifluous, the uh, tone. Do we of have to? My voice. Do we have to spell that on the screen? We probably do. <laughs> we probably do. Can you spell it right now so people can look it up? I think so. M e l l i f l u o u s. Okay. Sweet. Sweet sound. Yeah. Sweet sound. All right. The dulcet tones. Oh, the dulcet tones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he did. <laughs> we almost crashed. <laughs> No, but but on a serious note, I had him read the entire Senate bill, right, verbatim, um, so that we could go through it. And I had read it the night before. I read it yesterday again mm -hmm. um, because we've had some interest in it from mm -hmm. our clients and stuff like that. Yep. So the 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 basic point is that the first two sections that enact uh, sections of code in six four or I'm sorry five twenty seven and five twenty eight. Right. 527.1 and 527.8, right? right? Yes. Those two sections of code. Well, 
those are really just about going to get the temporary restraining order. Yes. And really, employers now have the ability to do that. And that's great because that's what you need. Mm-hmm. Um, but where it comes into play of now burdens on the employer is the ability to... <laughs> this is so weird to me. Right. <laughs> they, they redid 640 and i mean 6401 yeah and they basically said you have to incorporate the workplace violence prevention plan into the the, the iipp yes <laughs> and as i was telling matt it's really funny cuz when i'm looking at now you know, I do, we we do, we do do, but I have written so many more of those than you of over course. the 20 years. Of course, yeah. But when you're looking at them, you're like, my goodness, there are eight elements to the IPP. And then Matt, I had him read and he's reading through and I said, now which ones are missing? <laughs> because there, we get to 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 six, but the sixth one was now the violence prevention. Right, right. So they missed the other two. Yep. And so you're just going like, what's going on here? So instead of just saying, just add workplace violence prevention to your IAPP, mm. they go through this whole rigmarole of redoing the code. Yeah. They change it from 10 to 20 employees. They did this, they did that. It, they made a big mess out of this thing. Mm-hmm. So from that standpoint, it is a little cumbersome. Yeah. But the, the second piece is all the elements of the workplace violence prevention program. Yep. And I think you may just throw some things out there for them to sink their teeth into right, here. Right. Yeah, well, I mean, bring it back to the elements. I think the one of the things that I'm not sure if cracks me up is the right term because it's actually not funny. It's confusing. And the last thing we want is our clients to be confused by how to operate this plan. But it is kind of humorous to see how they approach this bill. And the thing that's struck me as odd was they actually incorporated all the elements that you would expect in the injury illness prevention plan within the subset of the workplace violence right. section that they added to it yeah but they removed as you noted two of the elements well the accident the, investigation yeah, accident investigation record which keeping. is in the workplace violence right but not now after the amendment it won't be in the iapp coding <laughs> you, you, you know, and now they did have a kind of a separate section established for record keeping, but it's not really in there either. Right. You, you know, yeah. it, it, it's so, yeah. And I can I can see people being confused. OK, I've always understood there to be eight elements in the IPP. Here's my IPP that we've been running since it was first introduced 30 years ago. It has eight elements, and now I'm reading through <laughs> through the code, and it says, oh, no, we only need six elements now, Steve. You, you don't need, oh, but the workplace violence has to have accident investigation. Has to have <laughs> Which is just so <laughs> silly because n- not even an accident has occurred yet. Right, right. Right. <laughs> And, and, so and, and, yeah. <laughs> the, the best part of all of it is Matt's reading through and he's like, okay, this regulation has to be enacted by Cal OSHA by 2025. Yeah, a, a standard has to be developed by, by December 20, 31st, 2025. Tw- December 31st, 2025, yeah, which so is over of- two years from now. <laughs> yeah. And then has to be adopted by December 31st, 2026. Correct which doesn't even follow with the typical standards that go forward, which is generally six months Mm -hmm. afterwards. Mm -hmm. So then the best part about that is, so we just established the date of has to have a a standard put in, right. You know, for how this plan should, should be constructed, should be constructed, should look, has to be available for potential adoption by December 31st, 2025. 26. No, no, no. 
for adoption by the 25. Okay. It's put forth and then has to be adopted Got it. by yeah, 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 26. Yeah. yeah, I believe you're correct. But yeah. all employers must comply with that by 20, July 24. Yeah, July 1st, 2024. So, so in eight months, you have to have it all ready to go. Yep. You have to have a plan that complies with this law, even though the standard's not there yet. And now we're so, going to get 18, 18 months of craziness in the meantime where everybody is probably creating their own plan as best as they right. can. Right. Or if they're even bothering at that point, you know, because they're going like, I don't know what to do, you know. All right, what do we put in here? How does it look? Because <laughs> one of the key things that OSHA loves to do is say it has to be effective. If, if you want to know what effective means, don't worry about that um, because it's so convoluted by OSHA standards, but go and check out some of our blog posts mm -hmm. that I've written on logic and how to uh, argue using logic yeah. to the uh, appeals board and the justice if you ever do get cited for an ineffective IIPP or in this case, an ineffective workplace right. violence prevention program. And so what we are doing to help with this and and I'll do a shameless plug here, man. Okay. But <laughs> have at uh, it. <laughs> we we have put together an online training, and we have model policies, model forms. Mm -hmm. uh, there will be a, a supervisors at workplace mm -hmm. violence prevention module, yep. or a different training altogether. There's also going to be how to do the investigation. There's a whole lot on record keeping because record keeping. <laughs> yeah. Talk a little bit about that because oh, that was the fascinating. Instant, yeah, the, 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 the violence incidents log. This log, first of all, they have several elements that they include that needs to be part of this log. Any, any incident that happens has to have some specific uh, information. The very first, very first element lists out date, time, and location. Yeah. And then three elements. Three, yeah, yeah, right. Good ones. Oh, all, all, yeah, and they're very important. And like two spots down in the code, they have another listed element that's required. This is basically the location again. So it's, okay, so is the first element location, is that one kind of a general, and then we get really specific with this later one, or is it the other way around? It's just going to cause more confusion, right? Right. Then you, and then there's the element of the protection. And I... 100%. I, we, we agree. You want to protect the identities of anybody right. involved in, in these. Uh, but there's a lot of language in the code about keeping uh, personal identifiers out. So right. whether that's name or in any way that they can use the information provided so that someone from outside of that incident can identify the victim, the, you know, the petitioner, the right. respondent, any of the witnesses. They keep all that information out but then they still require you to provide a detailed <laughs> right description of who what where when why and how right so yeah as steve was saying in the car kind of reads like one of those one of those uh, heavily marked up fbi or court release documents right. where it's all redacted. redacted yeah and everything is re is referred to as witness a so what was that movie <laughs> where the girls weren't they at nasa or something they just held up what was it? <laughs> yeah. Oh. She played in me or in Ma, and yeah. But it was so funny because she's like, "How did you know what it said?" <laughs> Held it up to the light. <laughs> so, you know, that what we're trying to say is, don't do redaction. Fill it in as victim one, victim yeah. two, witness. Well, that'll be in the training module itself. But right. we're, we're offering all these things for pre-order. Yes. We're going to have a version for cities, a version for counties, a version for schools, and a version for private entities as well. Um, but I don't want anybody to worry because yeah. the healthcare industry under Cal OSHA and, and federal OSHA has had a workplace violence prevention plan requirement for decades yeah and a lot of our more progressive public agencies have asked us to really take that model and mold that in for all employees which right. i think is good to begin with yeah and yeah. and 
so now you're probably saying, okay, you know, there's a lot to it. There's, it's not really that much different than your injury illness prevention program. It's not in a in a it's lot almost, of respects. It's almost, it's almost element by element the, the same yeah. the same. And if you same variety, yeah. if you're dealing with schools, then you already have a one year head start on this because yeah. of SB nine zero six, the yes. homicidal threat assessment. Yeah. That a lot of you know what is a credible threat, what is an unlawful. Mm -hmm. uh, violent act or, you know, right, right. type of thing. So from that standpoint, you, you yeah. already have an idea of how to conduct an investigation. You have an idea of how to do, uh, how to make reports, how to fill out paperwork and things like this. So a lot of those elements are going to be sweeped into this new bill yes. or yes. this, uh, you know, the new plan itself. Yeah. But I think, um, it, it is going to take a little bit of work. It is going to, um, take a little bit of detail to roll out training piece. That's the the tough one. This mm -hmm. is another another one like SB 906, the homicidal threat, and your AB 1825 for sexual harassment right. and mandated reporting. You're gonna have to throw this on there now, which you got to do annual training for workplace violence. Yep, yep, exactly. You know, and you know, one thing I'll say for for our clients or potential clients who are out there listening. Yes, they made these amendments to that IPP and makes it a little bit more muddied. I would recommend, and I'm sure Steve would back me up on this, that you continue to operate as if that IPP has eight elements in the code. Continue yeah. to do accident investigations for for all incidents related to safety. I, and Yeah, and I wouldn't roll back your IPP. I, I think you could really, if you're looking at the IPP, <laughs> is, <laughs> is to... Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm going to keep plugging this stuff only because we've done so many. We have so many blog posts on it. Yeah. So many topics on it, even trainings and and a lot of uh, mm -hmm. podcasts on it yeah. over the past decade. But the the bottom line is, don't roll back the IAPP. Just streamline it. Yeah. If that makes sense, there's so a lot of IAPPs want to go way off the rails and very detailed and it's best pull that back keep it to mm -hmm. i call it seven plus one elements because yes. some of the record keeping is not required if yeah. you're in certain industries so just pull it back and you know not yeah. roll it back but yeah streamline i said the wrong thing don't pull it back streamline it make sure that it is only those elements right and that's the point with yeah. the iapp is that a lot of times there's a tendency, like you said, for a client to just kind of pack everything into, not only is it the umbrella for my safety program, but I'm going to put in all of right, like, exactly. uh, everything. I, no, no, you want to do that. You want to have that in separate plans and policies of their own and yeah. have the IAPP be specifically for what the IAPP is required to have. Yeah, because when OSHA comes a knocking, then they go, <laughs> hey, can we see your IAPP? It, uh, why? <laughs> you're looking at you're looking at confined spaces. Yeah. No, but now my heat illness plan is part of my IPP, mm -hmm. and my what else? Bloodborne pathogens, right. and my powered industrial trucks, and my fall protection, and then they go, all these things are wrong. Yep. So, don't. You know, I think I go back to the Clint Eastwood movie, Heartbreak Ridge. Yeah. When he says, don't give the, the satisfaction. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, and that's exactly the case. Exactly. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll just kind of give you a synopsis here. Um, a couple things dealing with feds. I, I'm going to give you feds, Cal OSHA, whoever it may be, but these governmental inspectors. Um, I could go on and on. I'm going to try and give you three. So <laughs> the first one is I'm, I'm a member of this professional organization, mm -hmm. California Society of Safety and Security Professionals, okay. or Security yeah. and Safety Professionals. And as part of that was um, a OSHA consultation guy. Okay. And so when they rolled out the aerosol transmissible disease standard, Everybody was freaking out because who's this apply to? And there's not a whole lot of right. information there. 
So I went to the consultant and I said, hey, um, you know, who's this apply to? Mm -hmm. He's like, this is six months after implementation. We haven't even been trained on it yet. <laughs> so you start to put a lot of stuff in your plans and people don't really know. Right. I just had a call today when we were driving up here. My, our client called us mm -hmm. on three separate occasions, freaking out because he was talking with the feds on uh, another safety program that has to do with transportation yeah. uh, across the states. And he's like, this guy is tearing me a new one and I can't deal with it because I, I, everything I say, I'm digging myself deeper. And he said, right. you know, we need you to, to handle this for yeah. us. Okay, fine. So that's that. We've had countless times where OSHA has way overstepped their bounds um, and just kind of, you know, really putting people in a pickle. Yes. So I get clients that'll say a lot of times, hey, guess what? The inspector was very nice. He's not going to cite us. You know, we had a great conversation. <laughs> and I'm like, don't believe it. Don't, don't believe buy it. it. Don't buy it. Because they a got wolf in sheep's clothing right yeah, there. The inspector <laughs> might be nice, but the district manager is not going to let you get away with that. And that's yeah. how they make their money. So next thing you know, hey, we got this big citation. We got an $85,000 citation. And so yeah. I thought you said he was a nice guy. Right. Yeah, right. that's not the way it works. So um, th those are the three examples. But, you know, you, you got to look at that. I think... The last part of this little piece today mm -hmm. is, okay, why is the workplace violence prevention program so important? And, and this, this is, it, it is a burden and there's yeah. cost involved. There is. And there's a lot of, like, there's a lot of things we got to do once we get one of these notes. So uh, why is this important? We just had the shooter. Yes. Uh, walk into the bowling alley, yeah, and then the, into the, the restaurant. The Lewiston, Maine. The, yeah, yeah. We have all kinds of of uh, workplace violence episodes. Mm -hmm. When I was a young man, I had this is a great a great story okay. that ended horrifically, but it's a great learning experience. Okay. So I worked for a very large Fortune 500 company. We had 1,600 locations, and I got a call, supposedly, this was before there was a lot of caller ID and all this kind of stuff. I got a call from supposedly a UPS driver. Okay. And he said, I, I'm trying to deliver a package to your such and such location and I need the address. And I'm like, you need the address? It should be on the UPS shipping label. Yeah. So yeah. I... You know, I'm, I worked. I worked in jails. I worked for, so I'm like, okay, something's up here. So I said to him, well, what's it say on the UPS label? Well, blah, 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 blah. you know, it's all funny. And I said something just doesn't sound right. And and they were asking about a location that was offsite. You know, it was just one of these little mom and pop loan processing places. Right. And so I'm like, okay, well, it happened to be the same location that we were told earlier, like not much earlier, but maybe a day or two earlier right. about a woman that was having problems with her husband. So I, I called my big boss who was in charge of security, head of security for this Fortune 500 company. Right. And... She starts screaming and yelling at me. Really? What the fuck are you doing? And blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, what UPS driver is trying to find a location but doesn't have any information on the label? Right. Yeah. Makes no. zero sense. It smells. It, it, it smells it, stinky. Yeah. yeah. So, two days later, guy is waiting for his wife to pull into mm -hmm. the... Um, shop that day yeah it's waiting outside she comes in it's early she unlocks the door he goes in 
shoots her in the back with a shotgun, shoots the lady next to her, and then drives around to the back of the parking lot and blows his brains out. Oh. And I'm sitting here going, well, this is exactly why that sounded suspicious. Right. You got a guy, you got a report of domestic violence that they came to us, but there's no restraining order. Right. Because back then, this is not happening. Yep. Um, then you got this, I'm looking for this address, which is not listed anywhere, you know. And then you got this. Yeah. Now, I putting all this together, you're probably saying, well, why wouldn't the husband already know where the wife works? Yeah, did she? Well, she, okay, no, no, no. Yeah, go ahead. We had moved her. Oh, okay. To this other branch. Right, right. And so you, you put all these things together, but this is why it's important because you can't just go, don't be stupid. The UPS driver would never do something like this. Right. You can sit here all day long and go, well, this wouldn't happen and that one. All you have to do is look at any types of these incidents and you go, well, would anyone go into a school and shoot up a school? Would anyone go into a bowling alley? Would anyone do this? Would Look anywhere around the world. Yeah. Crazy stuff happens all the time. All the time. All the time. Yeah. And you can see it right now with this war in Israel and who knows what's going to happen. Yeah. You don't. But you need to have plans in place, and whether they're formalized or not, I think this is a good thing overall, mm -hmm. and I think it's something that can help uh, keep everybody yeah. safe to some degree. It gives you a working plan. It gives you the requirement to communicate, and that's part of it. You got to communicate yeah. with the affected employees. Yep. You got to yeah. let people know what to look for, and these types of things. So I think situational awareness. This is this will be a good thing. Yeah, it's the kind of thing that I think is important even outside of work, right? Like somebody who takes this training and learns to watch for the signs can start to notice things in their own personal life or maybe you know, the dangers that they interact with that are completely away from the workplace. On top of the fact that sometimes you can have a danger outside of the home that can eventually visit you in the workplace. So oh, it can actually all still the time. have a tremendous benefit. As we had with with the story you told, there's this gentleman who, who, is working the, for the all company the, or all yeah. the time, all exactly. the time. So it, it it's one of those things where, look, society. I think we all know, and most people watching probably know what I'm talking about. It seems more tense, right? Like people have a lot more going on. They're a little bit more stressed. Maybe their bank account doesn't have as much on. Maybe they have a lot of emotional stuff going on at home. There's a lot of stress going on. And that's on top of all the news media throwing all this stressful things in, in here out there. And the fact is, when you push people to the limits, extreme events are the result. Uh -huh. and what are what's an example of an extreme event? Workplace violence is one of the key yeah. one of the key items. So it it is we can quibble about how they're approaching some way, how they're doing this, but it's well, absolutely if, crucial. If you ever want, I can share a lot of stories mm -hmm. uh, with you about actual cases that I worked that would horrify you. Yeah. You know, absolutely that that didn't make news media that yeah aren't out there necessarily um, for everyone to read about and see about and cover it on five o'clock news. Yeah. There's a lot of horrific things. A lot of stuff that we were able to nip in the bud before, mm -hmm. you know, it got to that level. Right. But uh, there's a lot of nasty, nasty stuff out there. Yeah. You yeah. know, and I think, think about your spouse, think about your children, think about your, your parents or whoever you know, as close to you and works for you that, you know, this is not good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So with that, be on the lookout. We're going to be sending out some emails, pre-order our yeah. policy and our training. We got the combo like mm -hmm. it, like if you go to a fast food restaurant and you order a combo, right? Uh, we make it much easier to order our combo, but we are going to be offering the combo. It's a uh, five of uh, flat $500 for the training. Yes and the policy which is unheard of uh, so be looking for that you can pre-order it right now today if you go on our site um, but uh, i think 
I think that's all I got today. And plus, we got to fix these fishing poles because tomorrow we got some halibut to catch. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Have a great and a safe day, and we'll see you on the next episode of the Risk Control Show. See you, folks.